previously we started a new devlog series with the goal of adding sound and music to our indie game with Blight. And today, we will continue the devlog series by making our sound manager that manages the sound effects that will be used in our game. For those of you who are new here, I'm June and my team and I are working on a reverse RPG game where you play as a wisp who can transform into different monsters with different playstyles with the goal of eliminating human settlers invading your island home. It's an RPG game, but here we play as the monsters instead of the usual heroes we mostly play in most RPG games. So if you're interested in following the development of our game, feel free to subscribe to get updated on the progress of the development. Let's begin! In our last devlog, we made the perfect audio listener for our third-person RPG game. We also tackled some details on audio sources, and today we will make a sound manager that manages the sounds for our game. Before we start making the sound manager, let's talk about why we need it in the first place. First, having a sound manager is very handy to use. It's like a cabinet of sound files that we can easily pull any sound effects we need anywhere in the game. Second is optimization. Since we have a cabinet of sound files already, we can just instantiate the sounds to a game object when we need it, and delete it after it's already been played. This will save us memory since we are not assigning sound files to each game object that plays the sound. We'll just call it when we need it. And lastly, having a centralized sound manager will let us adjust our volume using a central volume control that we will be placing in our settings menu once we develop that feature of the game. Now that we know the advantages of having a sound manager, let's proceed to differentiating which sound effects we will add to it. So let's categorize the sound effects into two parts. First is the environmental sound effects. These are effects that are placed in our world inside game objects, and we will have these sound effects play on loop. For example, our river sound effects, or our fire sound effects. We don't need a sound manager for this since we will play the sound effects when the game object is rendered in our scene. As for our volume control, we will use mixers to manage the volume when we implement volume control systems for our settings menu. Second, we will only use the sound manager if we will play a sound effect once during an event. For example, if the skeleton is hit, we will play a hit sound effect just like this. Or if you use sword attacks, you'll play a swoosh sound when the attack animation plays. So to start, this is my script for my sound manager. Basically what it does is it saves all the sound files and labels them so that I can use them later on. I also added a volume control for each sound effect in cases that I need to adjust the volume from the source itself. Then I added all the sound effects and music to the inspector and I labeled them. Then, to use this sound effect, we just simply need to call the function to play the sound and fill the name of the sound, and also fill the game object on which the sound will play from. Since our game is a 3D game, we need to set which game object the sound is coming from. For example, this is a script for when we swing our sword, and this function is tied to the animation events for sword attacks. So we just simply have to call our sword swing sound effect from here. Then to make it random, we'll make a randomizer so that the sound effects that we'll play are not redundant. We'll also make the selection of the sound effects as a list so that we can modify it per weapon. This will be useful when we want to customize the sound effects for each weapon in the future. Let's test it. Alright, it works and it's randomized. Now let's try to implement the sounds when we're hitting our enemies. We'll add the hitting sounds when blood is splattered, so we just simply add it to the blood splattering function. Then again, we add a randomized sound effect and add it to a list of sound effects for future customization. Now let's test it. Let's try this torchbearer. By the way, I've added some new behaviors for the torchbearer. He's more evasive now when you're trying to hit him. He will sprint backwards to evade your attacks. Alright, now we can hear sounds when our sword hits the enemy. As for guards with armor, I want it to be different. Let's add a different hit sound for it. Let's make it more metallic, like hitting steel or iron armor with some blood splatters. Let's also add randomizers. Then let's test it. Not all guards though have heavy armor, so I made a new stat for them that accounts for the armor that they are wearing. And this will be the basis of the sound playing, as well as add a bonus to their health points. Alright, sounds good. 
Next, let's make some sound effects when the skeleton is hit. You can simply add this one on the function where our player is hit. And just like before, we'll add randomizers and a list to store the sound effects that we want to use. Let's test it. Alright, sounds good. Now for the breaking of the skeleton. Let's add some sound effects when the skeleton breaks. We'll add this in our breaking manager's script. And then, we'll add a randomizer and a list of the sound effects that we'll be using. Let's test it. Alright, sounds good. Now, let's make some effects for the conjuring of the skeleton. For our skeleton, we have two ways to conjure. First is the first time we conjure our skeleton warrior, and the second is when we break and pick up the broken parts. Let's start with the first attempt of conjuring. So we just need to call one sound effect for this one. We no longer need a randomizer for it. Also, Alex, one of our volunteers who made effects for the skeleton hits and breaking, made an effect for conjuring. This is what it sounds like. Let's add that effect along with this eerie, dark sound effect. Let's test it. Now for the next part, the reconjuring mechanic. First, let's simply add the eerie sound effect. Then, let's call a sound effect for every time a broken part snaps to our main body. Let's use the hit sounds that Alex made for our skeleton as our sound effects for when the bones attach to each other. Let's test it. Alright, sounds good. Let's hear it in slow motion. Sounds great. So you can see, it's really easy to add sound effects anywhere in your game scripts using sound map. Next step we need is to integrate a volume control system that manages the volume for our sound manager. For now, let's make a temporary slider and link it to our sound manager. Then before playing the sound, we will check first the value of the slider and modify the volume of our sound effect to match the settings of the volume slider. As for the effects that are placed in our environment, we will simply add them to a mixer and we will control the mixer's master volume along with the rest of the sounds in the sound manager. This will give us full control of all sound effects in our game. Let's test it. Let's test the volume at 100%. Now let's test it at 50. Alright, it works fine. Now let's test it at 0. Right, it's silent and it works. Now we have most of the sound effects covered except for some mechanic like when we hit the enemies that are guarding or if we are hit by the enemies while we are guarding. We also lack some sound effects for the wisp moving around, as well as the sound effects for the acolyte spells when casting and launching the spells. So at the moment, Alex is making the sound effects for these mechanics. And I will update you guys in future devlogs once these effects are set. If you'd like to check out some of the features we are developing, you can join us in our Discord server. I'll link it down in the description below. If you want to support the development of Wisplight, we have a Patreon page for those who want to financially support our team. Just like our current patrons who have been supporting us since the beginning of the funding of Wisplight's assets. I'm very grateful for all your support. For those who want to volunteer, just like Alex, who made most of our sound effects, and Stefan who also volunteered to make 3D props for our game, you can contact us via Discord and we'll see what tasks we can give you. In our next devlog, we'll continue with our sound design series by talking about game feel and how to make our combat hits feel juicy, just like this one. Till next time.